Hi everyone, I'm here today with my June book haul. So I'm here to talk to you about the books that I've bought recently and the books that I have been sent for review. I will list these in the description box down below. And we've got quite a few of my most anticipated releases on this pile too. Oh, and I just realized it's one extra one that was sitting on um, my book trolley. So let's start with that. This one is, I want to know that I will be okay by Deirdre Sullivan. And I think I've already mentioned this in a video because I think I showed it in a vlog when it arrived in the post. Deirdre Sullivan has written YA books before. This is her first adult book. It is a collection of short stories and it sounds right up my street. Slightly carb and um, hint of magical realism or a lot of magical realism. It says that a teenage girl tries to fit in at a party held in a haunted house with unexpected and disastrous consequences. A mother and daughter run a thriving online business selling antique dolls while their customers get more than they bargained for. And after a stillbirth, a young woman discovers that there is something bizarre and wondrous growing inside her. Every time I read the blurb of that, I get very excited. Um, then this is a copy of a book that I actually already own, but um, WNN got in touch with me and asked if they could send me this new edition that they've just published. So this is Toddler Hunting and Other Stories by Taika Kono, and this is translated, I think, by Lucy North. Yeah, from the Japanese by Lucy North. And this new edition has an introduction by Siaka Murata, who is the author of Convenience Store Woman, and Earthlings and many other books in Japanese that sadly haven't been translated into English yet. This is a collection of creepy stories. I did read one of these stories, I think it was in a Halloween vlog last year where I was sampling short stories from different collections that focused on horror and creepy things um, and it wasn't my favourite out of the ones that I read but I do have high hopes for this collection as a whole. On the back it says, on a Saturday night that feels filled with excitement, Fukuko and her husband decide to visit unannounced another couple. That was the story that I read and I was very underwhelmed by it. Um, Fumiko's passion for her husband thrives on sadomasochism, but now she may be pregnant and there are ants crawling obscenely over a piece of meat in her kitchen. When Akiko thinks about how she cannot have children, she feels an emotion close to joy, but though she loathes little girls, she cannot resist buying expensive clothes in which to dress little boys. So the blurb sounds amazing. The first story is I said was very underwhelming and that made me a little wary about continuing which I, I I will do it's just normally one of the strongest stories is the first story that's why you put it first so I'm hoping that's an anomaly and I'll get on with the rest of the stories in the book but we'll see we'll see this is a poetry collection that I purchased which is by Lenia Rodriguez Iglesias this is published by Blood Axe and it's called A Little Body Are Many Parts and this is a dual language book so it is in Spanish and then the translations are in English and I'm not sure if it's translated by the author let's see um, no, it's translated by Abigail Perry, who is also a poet, and Serafina Vick, who I do not know. But I read some of uh, Lenia's poetry in Poetry London, the most recent issue, and I found it delightful and dark um, and full of magical realism and surrealism, and I really, really wanted to read more. The poem in Poetry London was about a frog that lived in a woman's bra, and then she ate it. It was, it was weird. I was like, I like that kind of weird. Yes, please, thank you. So I have picked this one up. I've been sent a proof copy of this novel by Mona Arshi, who is also a poet. This isn't coming out until November, and it's called Somebody Loves You. It says Ruby gives up talking at a young age. Her mother isn't always there to notice. She comes and goes and goes and comes until one day she doesn't. Silence becomes Ruby's refuge, sheltering her from the weather of her mother's mental illness and a pressurised suburban atmosphere. Then, let's see, what should we talk about next? Uh, let's talk about this, which is one of my most anticipated releases, which I think has just come out or is coming out this month. It's coming out this month on the 24th of June. This is The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker. I read her nonfiction book, The Time In Between, years ago when it came out. And this is her debut fiction title. It says, oh, actually the blurb is not on the back. Is it inside? Yes, Chrissy knows how to steal sweets from the shop without getting caught. The best hiding place for hide and seek. The perfect wall for handstands. Now she has a new secret. It gives her a fizzing sherbet feeling in her belly. 
she doesn't get to feel power like this at home, where food is scarce and attention scarcer. 15 years later, Julia is working in a fish and chip shop and trying to mother her five-year-old daughter, Molly. She's always worried about affording food and school shoes, about what the other mothers think of her. Most of all, she worries about the social services taking Molly away. That's when the phone calls begin, which Julia is too afraid to answer because it's clear the caller knows what happened 15 years ago. And it's time to face the truth. Is forgiveness and redemption ever possible for someone who has killed? Very, very intriguing blurb there. It's quite a big book, this one, too. I bought a copy of John Green's new book. This is his first non-fiction title called The Anthropocene Reviewed. I actually haven't listened to the podcast that came before this, which I'm hoping is a good thing because there will be no material in here that I'm already familiar with or have heard him speak about. I really do admire John. I used to really love his books. I'm no longer obviously the target audience for them, but I still really enjoy his YouTube channel along with his brother Hank. And I'm sure this is going to be really beautiful. The Anthropocene is of course the the state of the world that we are currently living in where humans are having the most impact on the planet um, apart from any other factors and I have enjoyed Underland by Robert McFarlane which again is about living through the Anthropocene I think this is more specific it says it is essays on a human-centered planet so I think he he looks at particular things he wants to analyze and jumps from object to object and I think that sounds really great a, another non-fiction book that I have here I have several actually a couple um, this is a proof copy of Maggie Nelson's new book which is much bigger than her other books. I'm very surprised by that. This is called On Freedom and it is coming out. When are you coming out? You're coming out on the 2nd of September. It says on the back, part of the trouble resides in the world itself, whose meaning is not at all self-evident or shared. In fact, it operates more like God in that. When we use it, we can never really be sure what exactly we're talking about or whether we're talking about the same thing. So that seems to be talking about gaps in language, which is always interesting to read about. Drawing on a vast range of material, from critical theory to pop culture, to the intimacies and plain exchanges of life, Maggie Nelson explores how we might think, experience, or talk about freedom in ways responsive to the conditions of our day. I always love just reading Maggie Nelson's thoughts. My favorite book by her is Bluettes, which is amusing on the color blue, but is also partly autobiographical. I also really enjoyed her book, The Argonauts, which came out more recently. And I do have a couple of other books on my shelf by her, which I should probably read before getting around to her latest called The Red Parts and um, Jane. So I may read those over the summer and then get to this one closer to its release date. If you enjoy work by Olivia Lang and by Ali Smith actually then I think you would really like Maggie Nelson's work if you haven't read her before and if you're looking for a good place to start I would suggest starting with Bluettes. That's certainly where I started and I fell in love with her there. Another non-fiction book that I have is this one here which I've purchased and I've just realised it has a quote from Maggie Nelson on the back which I did not realise and that is very fortuitous. It also has a quote on the back from Alice Wong who we know I love. This is Their Plant Eyes a personal and cultural history of blindness by M. Leona Godin and it has the title and also the author's name in braille on the front so this is as the title would suggest this is a cultural history of blindness um, and looking at blind culture and braille and the importance of that not, not just in a practical sense but um, the inheritance of that and yeah I really obviously would like to read this I do find it very difficult to read books about blindness and losing sight as someone whose sight is deteriorating but when I feel like I can I would like to read this book the author of this next book reached out to me and asked if she could send me a copy of her publisher could send me a copy of her latest book. This is called This Is Our Undoing by Lorraine Wilson. And she said that these are, well, this book contains themes that she knows that I love. Magical realism, fairy tale, discusses disability and all of that. So it says, could you condemn one child to save another? In a near future, Europe fracturing under climate change and far-right politics, biologist Lena Stevenson works in the remote Ryla Mountains, safely away from London State. When an old enemy dies, Lena's dangerous past resurfaces, putting her family's lives at risk. 
Trapped with her vulnerable sister alongside the dead man's family, Lena is facing pressure from all sides. Her enemy's eldest son is determined to destroy her in his search for vengeance, whilst his younger carries a sinister secret. But the forest is hiding its own threats, and as a catastrophic storm closes in, Lena realises that if she is to save her family, she must become a monster. That last line in particular really intrigues me. I was sent this book for review from Angry Robots Books called The Cabinet by Unsuk Kim. And I just thought I really love this cover, but I don't think the final one looks like that because on the back, let me zoom in so you can see, there is a pink cover with a chameleon. So I think that may be what the final cover is going to look like. It says cabinet 13 looks like an old ordinary cabinet but it is filled with the strangest stories. This is translated from the Korean by Sean Lynn Halbert. And I just think it sounds quite creepy and really intriguing. Another review copy that I have been sent is this uh, Reputation by Lex. And I'm just so thrilled for them. I was talking to Lex when their book was out on submission and it's always such a weird time, especially, I was gonna say your first book, this is not their first book. Lex already has a non-fiction book out, but this is their first fiction title and it can seem to take ages when things are out on submission time moves in a really weird way and then sometimes just everything will happen at once and I'm just so thrilled that this is going to be out in the world next month so this is Reputation and it is a mix of Jane Austen and also I was going to say Broadchurch that's not what I mean Bridgerton, uh, Gilmore Girls, all of that stuff um, and I'm sure that it's going to do so so well. It says Regency just got a little more rebellious. Abandoned by her parents in favour of a sea view, middle class Georgiana Ellers has moved to a new town to live with her dreary aunt and uncle. At a particularly dull dinner party she meets the enigmatic Frances Campbell, that's the name of my sister, a wealthy socialite and enchanting member of the in crowd. Through Frances and her friends, Georgiana is introduced to a new world of wild parties and drunken debauchery and mysteries. I know that Lex writes in a similar vein to Casey McQuiston, lots of very funny dialogue and astute observations. And I'm sure that this is going to be great. And then finally, finally, did I say when Lex's book was coming out? It's coming out in July. Um, and then finally, one of my most anticipated releases of the year. This is the Dragon Tea, no, the Tea Dragons. I always get that the wrong way around. I always say Dragon Tea. I mean Tea Dragon. The Tea Dragon Tapestry. Um, this is, I think it's the final book in the Tea Dragon Society graphic novel series. And I have been putting off reading the second one, which this is the Tea Dragon Festival, because I didn't want to not have any other books by Kay O'Neill sitting on my shelf. So I am really happy to have this one because now I can read the second one and then slowly get round to reading this. It's just so beautiful. I don't want to spoil myself or you. So let's just have a quick, oh, that's what it looks like if you want to see the color palette. It's a beautiful, diverse graphic novel series. And I don't think I've ever read anything graphic novel wise that is more heartwarming. So if you're looking just for a lovely, lovely tale, something that is also just very aesthetically pleasing and beautiful, then I would very much recommend the Tea Dragon Society, which is the first one in the series. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. As I said, I will list them in the description box down below. I would love to know if you have read any of these, any of the backlist ones, or if you're excited about any of the newer releases. What have you been reading recently? Let me know in a comment down below and I'll be back for another video very soon. Sending lots of love. Bye.